What's up? It's 5 Minute Friday. Today we're going to talk about saving your house from a potential flood. What's up, Coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Lama Coral YouTube channel. Welcome to the first ever 5 Minute Friday, where we may or may not make it to five minutes, we'll see. But we'll talk about tips, tricks, and gadgets that you can use in the reefing hobby. All right, let's jump right in. There is no question that having an RODI unit in your house will save you time, it will save you money, and it will definitely save your back. Almost every time I am in the local fish store, someone is lugging in five or 10 gallon jugs of water and lugging them out and I'm sure the local fish store loves the business, but at the same time, you can save yourself so much time, so much money, and of course, the back-breaking hauling of all of that water, and your reef tank is gonna be better for it because you're gonna be more apt to do water changes and maintenance on your system. Trust me, I know it's one of those things that's like, I don't wanna buy an RODI unit because it's an extra 150, 200 bucks or whatever, but I'm telling you, you will thank yourself every day when you have one in your home. Now, if you have one of these, you will also need a reservoir or something to store the RODI water in when you're not using it. In my case, I use a 10 gallon brute can. On top of that, you're also going to want something to stop the flow of water when it is full. Let me say this as plainly as I can. You will flood your house, or at least the room that it's in. It's almost a guarantee if you don't have some sort of mechanism to stop the flow of water. And you might be like, Remy, my mind is sharp like tack. I would never forget. No, you'll forget. In fact, I am a betting man and I will put $100 on that you will forget. It took me a solid year of not learning my lesson before I finally installed a $10 piece of the puzzle, a float valve. You literally drill a small hole into your reservoir where you want the water line to be, install as per the instructions, and there you go. Your first line of defense against a flooded room. Can these fail? Yes. Most things in this hobby can and will fail at some point, but you at least decrease the risk of it happening. And I would still set a timer to come check on it. I would still make sure that you're not leaving for an extended period of time, maybe going on vacation and leaving your RO on. Now, if you're super fancy and you got some money to burn, there's also a digital version of this as well. There's a couple of companies out there that make these. I think one of them is called the Flood Guardian from XP Aqua. That one's pretty popular also nicknamed the marriage saver. I don't know why I like the float valve more, but if you have the float valve and the flood guardian, you're only looking at like $100 for two lines of defense when it comes to preventing a flood in your house. If you really wanna take it a step further, invest in some leak sensors. This brand has been making the rounds in some of my local groups here in the St. Louis area and people seem to be pretty satisfied with it. I cannot vouch for them myself, but I think the idea of being notified on your phone while you're away is a good thing. Of course, Apex and Hydros users have the option to get a leak detection probe. And then there's the good old fashioned watchdog. If it detects water, it just sounds a really loud alarm in your home. Now, if you're at home, fantastic. But if you're out for an extended period of time or maybe on vacation, it doesn't really matter at that point. You're never gonna know, unless you have some sort of camera or monitoring system to hear sound, and then you could send the neighbor over or your local fish store or whatever. But for 12 to $15, it's probably worth the investment just as a backup to a backup. Safety and security are not a glamorous part of this hobby, but they are so necessary. And I think as a new reefer, when I first started, when I first got into this, I was like, just give me the equipment so that I can get this done and not even think about any of the backup or precautions that needed to be taken to do this safely. Everything we talked about in today's video is in the description below. And please, if you have any suggestions for this 5 Minute Friday segment, please put it in the comment section below. If you have any tips, I may feature you in a video. Any cool gadgets or things that have made the reefing hobby easier for you, please contribute, that would be so awesome. Also, for those of you that listen to the Reef News Network, and if you don't, you should download it because you can listen to Reef Talk in the car or wherever you are, which is awesome in my opinion. You may notice that I've started doing a tip of the week on every episode, so that will be kind of in conjunction with this video. It may not always match up, but 
you'll be able to come here for a little bit further explanation and a more visual experience when it comes to the tip of the week. And we'll see you next week for another five minute Friday powered by Reef News Network. They said that when the wood gets dry, you need to oil it again. So this is definitely, it's drying up. This is my new desk that I got probably three weeks ago and it's, uh, it's getting dry. So I'm gonna need to lube it up again. I guess it comes with uh, large pieces of wood. What can I say? All right. Peace.